Hello everyone. Today I'm going to show you how to set up an FTP server on Microsoft Azure's hosting platform in about 10 minutes. And we're going to do this using a virtual machine and the built-in FTP server that comes with IIS. So to start, we need to create our first VM. It'll be a Windows Server VM. You can pick any OS that you need on your server. And we're going to do this using the Resource Manager deployment model. We're going to give our VM a basic name. I'm going to select HDD. I don't need premium disks for this. I will get the lower pricing point because of that. RDP login. I'm going to categorize this under a resource group called dev test. Now, if you're not familiar with resource groups, they're basically just a categorization of all of your items in Azure. So you can use that to look at billing, for example, between dev and test or production resources. Now, because some of these basic servers are pretty slow, even for remote desktop, I'm going to avoid the A0 and A1 VMs. I'm going to go with something with a little bit more memory, so about probably A2 with three and a half gigs. Now, the OS drive will have about 120 to 130 gigabytes of memory, which is more than sufficient for what I need. We're going to use the managed disks, so we don't have to worry about storage limitations or anything like that. And that is the recommendation from Azure going forward. Now, setting up the VM, we're going to do the bulk of the work as we set this up. The first thing is we want a static IP for FTP. We don't want that to change every time the VM boots up or gets reallocated. Second thing is we need to define all of our port rules on our network security group and the default RDP rules, of course, there. But we need three different rules for this. We need the FTP data port, command port, and the passive ports. So we're going to start with the FTP command port. And you can actually select that just from the drop-down under services. And you'll see your TCP port 21 already. Go ahead and select OK. Next, we're going to do the data port, which is port 20. So that's utilized by active FTP, I believe. And then we're going to add our port range for passive FTP. And since this is going to be a range, personally, I'm going to do 60,000 through 65,000. Okay, so that's it for the network security group. Very straightforward. We can go ahead and create the VM. We don't need any other additional options for this. We'll go ahead and let that run. So we're gonna go ahead and let Azure deploy our FTP VM. And when we come back, we'll go ahead and set up the software side of things. Okay, so now we have our FTP virtual machine deployed on Azure. So we can go ahead and connect to the VM. Okay, now that our server manager is kind of initialized here, we can add roles and features, and we're going to add the FTP features that are part of the web services role. Let's try to come down here, add web server IIS. It's going to want us to add the management console features, and then as part of, we can skip the rest and go straight to role services on the left. Because I want this to be strictly an FTP server, I'm going to deselect everything in this list and I'm only going to install and enable the FTP service. It's pretty much all I need for this particular virtual machine. We'll go ahead and let that install and when the installation is finished then we can configure the FTP settings in IIS Manager as well as make sure our firewall rules and everything are up and running as well. Once those pieces are done then it's just a matter of actually testing the FTP service. Okay, now that our FTP features are installed, let's go ahead and move on. We can close the server manager. We're done with that part. So the, what we want to do is go find the IIS administration console. Now what's going to happen is when we start this up, we're going to have two things. We are going to have the default website that IIS installs in there, as well as a default app pool. 
but uh, they're not going to be functional. So we're going to actually remove those since we don't need this server to act as any kind of web server. So you can see in here our app pull is non-functional because we didn't install any other portions of the web server role. Now that we're in here though, we can add our FTP site. I'm just going to point this to the FTP root folder. I'm going to, for now, go ahead and set no SSL, but if you want a secure FTP connection, this would be the time to probably actually import your SSL certificate into IIS. So if you're not familiar with that, up at the server level in server certificates, you come over here and say import, and you bring in your PFX file uh, with a private key password. And at that point, then when you come in here and add your site, the SSL certificate will be available. So for now, I'm going to go ahead and set no SSL because I don't have one that I'm going to set up right now. I'm going to do basic authentication in this particular case. I'm going to say all users by default will get read and write access. And you can change all these permissions, of course, later. So now that we have our FTP site set up, the next thing is we need to set up the firewall for passive FTP. Now, this is done really in two places. Number one, we need to set the actual IP address for the firewall and the port range uh, at the server level. So we're going to go up here and we're going to say the ports that we set up in the Azure portal were 60,000 through 65,000. And I'm going to utilize the local host firewall for this. So we have that configured now. Now you can also set the IP address of the firewall at the site level. So if you want multiple FTP sites here, you can do that. But as far as the port range, that has to be done at the server level. So if you go down to the site level and try to do that, the port range is grayed out. So that's all the IIS configuration that we need to configure for the time being, so we can close out of that. So the next step for the firewall is to make sure that one, our firewall rules for the FTP are enabled, and two, that stateful FTP is enabled as well. So we're going to go check those. And typically when you install the FTP role, it creates the firewall rules for you. So if we simply scroll down to inbound, we have our three FTP rules for SSL. And if you wanted to actually, we did not actually add that port range to the Azure portal. So if you want to utilize that, you'll need to add port 990. But we did add our passive FTP ports as well as our standard uh, command port. So now we can open a command line. And before we run this, I'll actually show you that it does make a difference in the connectivity to the server. So let's come out of here for a second and launch up FileZilla. And let's go ahead and try and connect without doing this. And what should happen is we should not be able to connect to the server. So there it's taking a little bit. It's going to time out. Eventually the connection won't take. So let's cancel that. Go back to our server. Let's go ahead and run our command. Now the command is net sh advanced firewall set global stateful FTP enable. And then we do need to start and stop or excuse me, stop and start the FTP service. Now once we have that, we should be able to make our connection now. And there you can see now we have our directory listing. So as far as setting up an FTP server on I, uh, Microsoft Azure, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this video. It's not a it's definitely not a comprehensive video on all the possible configurations for an FTP, but hopefully it's a nice quick start to get you going. Thank you for watching and if you like the video, give me a thumbs up in the description box below.